my screen here. We're, we're first going to talk about um, Conegra, and that is ticker symbol C A G. Over here, and if you guys want to, uh, if you guys haven't seen this platform before, this is actually uh, Weeble. Uh, this is actually something that I just started with our Chaos Crew members. Which, if you're not a part of, you can see a lot of people that are highlighted in green that have those special uh, um, icons next to their names. They're part of the Chaos Crew. Uh, what you get with that is a daily watch list. So the watch list that we're you know kind of developing for the week. Yes, there are stocks that we're watching throughout the week, but we also put out a daily watch list if things change within the market. Maybe something spiking or running for some reason. We put out a watch list every day uh, for the for the Chaos Crew. It's four ninety nine a month. Helps support the channel. Also, you get uh, secret live streams as well and um, all kinds of other goodies uh, to go along with it and access to my public accounts daily. So if you guys want to check out, hit the join button or the uh, uh, link is also in the description if you want to check that out as well. We'd love to have you as part of the Chaos Crew. All right, so getting into Conegra, they have uh, earnings pre-market on the 1st, which is uh, what, Thursday? Wednesday. Um and uh, last quarter, they did beat earnings by a ton. We saw demand for uh, packaged goods go through the roof. Their earnings per share then were at 75% at, or 75, 75 cents. And I think that they beat that for this quarter coming in at 83 cents per share is what my estimation is. Their estimated earnings per share uh, from analysts are at 57 cents. Um, and I think that this is going to be another really good uh, quarter for Conegra. It, in the past, they haven't really had that much going on. They took a huge hit, obviously, with... Um, the, the, everything else crashing, but we've seen such a huge increase in demand from uh, packaged food goods. And uh, we're going to get into that when we uh, talk about Pepsi here in a little bit, but um, this is one that I actually really like uh, Christian. And I think that we could definitely see an earnings beat this time around. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that it didn't move more um, in general over the past six months. Yeah. But you know, it, it's been up a little bit. I have 71 cents a share, so don't have it as high as you, but I do believe it'll beat um, year to date up 3%. Uh, it's actually down 10% the past month, yeah. which everything's been down. Right. Yeah, month. that doesn't really say much, but yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's just, I, I feel like it doesn't belong down here, to be quite honest. So 71 cents a share. And I hope this thing moves. I've been waiting for this thing to move. Yeah, I mean, and even from a technical standpoint, we've seen this kind of like hovering around on the RSI around 30. It's kind of come down to a decent area of support around $34 a share, closed at 35 bucks, um, and uh, ended up closing the day after hours on Friday at 35.12. So I think that uh, this probably ends up going higher. We might see this run into uh, Wednesday's earnings as well. So this is definitely one to keep an eye on. If I were to make an entry this on this, if you hadn't uh, made an entry yet, I would look for some sort of break over this 3512 range, this 3530 even potentially. Or if it comes back down and gives you an opportunity to get down at 33 bucks a share, 3370 is probably an area that I would look for a bounce. Those are a couple spots to watch for potential entries and starting to scale yourself in. But I think we probably see a run into this and a beat. Now, as we always talk about earnings, make sure that it, you understand that there's always a risk. Even if they beat earnings, there could be something in that report that uh, causes the market to react in a different way. So if they beat earnings and maybe their outlook isn't good or they come up with a revenue numbers that maybe missed the mark, you could see a negative reaction from investors. Um, but, you know, you just never know. So understand going uh, the risk going into and holding through earnings. Sometimes we hold through earnings, um, but it, we always want to make sure that we're holding through earnings on, you know, with money or with funds that we can afford to lose or afford to take risk on. So make sure you have that understanding. And then moving on to Mick Cormick. Now, this is one that I think is probably my favorite one this week as far as earnings are concerned. Pepsi is a close second, but I really like Mick Cormick. First of all, because I'm a homer and McCormick is based out of Maryland. So um, uh, we, we're really passionate about our old bay down here or over here. And uh, so uh, McCormick, that's not McKesson. I did it myself. People do it all the time. Not to be confused with McKesson, but McCormick is MKC uh, is the ticker symbol. I actually got into this and showed this to my uh, Chaos Crew folks. Again, join button. Uh, and this is 
was definitely a steal, I think, down at 185. Started to scale myself in at 185 and then ended up getting a decent average around 189. May consider adding to this if we start to see this run up and, and break up over um, 193. But looking at earnings here, we have earnings estimates at 152. I think they come in at 163. And um, this is why. Uh, there hasn't been that much of a change in the way that we have been living from the previous quarter to the quarter that are about to report on. And I think that there's actually been a stronger demand for, um, you know, spices. People are cooking at home more. And I think that even as people have been, uh, you know, stuck in their homes and maybe even uh, venturing out a little bit more, I think they're starting to figure out that, you know, it's cooking at home. It's not so bad. So we've started to hear reports about shortages in other areas of the country as far as spices are concerned. And, you know, McKesson's or McCormick stands to uh, um, still benefit from this. Um, what, you, what do you think about that, Christian? What's your number on that? Uh, my what? estimated er, er, earnings per share, my, my guess was 163. Estimated earnings per share is at 152. Yeah, I have 171. Um, I think the only way this doesn't hit it is due to the things you said, um, not being able to keep up with demand. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. Everything you said, uh, when I, when I go to the grocery store, I mean, there, there is still a shortage of, um, spices. And I think even as we open restaurants back up, it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah. So, and then even when they do open up, to get people to go out, I think there's going to be a little bit of, I think there'll be an initial pop. Then I think it's going to slow down and it's going to take time to build back up. Um, so I think for, I mean, for at least through the middle of next year, I still see people staying home. Yeah. And I mean, and you would know this probably better than anybody as far as the hospitality side of things, just cause just with your background. But I mean, there's, I mean, there is still isn't any kind of real demand for people to going back and eating out or at least eating in restaurants and that sort of thing. I'm sure there's the takeout side, you could make an argument for that, but it's still not ne and nearly what it was. So I think that, you know, McCormick still stands to benefit a lot from that. Yeah. Um, so the other yes. thing, uh, the other thing is too, that uh, if you guys, so McCormick comes out with a dividend as well, the X date for that is in four days from tomorrow. So make sure that if you want to take part in that dividend, they paid out by the end of the month in October. And so if you want to be part of that as well, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me a whole lot, but it's like 62 cents per share. I think is what it is, what the dividend is. So just make sure you're keeping an eye on that as well. It could be, um, a reason why people you might see the stock move up as well as people want to get in on that X date. So make sure you keep an eye on that as well. Um, all right. So the next one uh, I have on the list here is going to be SPAC. So SPAQ. Now this one is interesting. So there was a lot of controversy over J uh, Jim Cramer talking about SPAQ on Friday. I saw Twitter just going absolutely insane and really kind of shitting on Jim. And look, you guys can make arguments as to whether or not he's influenced by this person or that person. But the facts that he brought up about, you know, um, SPAC or SPAQ and the concerns that everybody should be asking themselves, I think are valid. I'm not saying that SPAQ can't run or that this type of merger won't be something huge, but I think it's important to know what the history of Fisker actually is. The company went bankrupt. If you guys recall, the actual Fisker vehicles had problems. You could hit a puddle the wrong way, get something wet on the vehicle, and it would catch fire. And that's not it. That's, I'm not making that up. So there are risks involved with holding something like SPAQ. Could it pop off? Yes, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they have uh, the, uh, they're going to be voting on this merger this week. Um, and so I, I had a lot of people asking me about this. And so how, how should I trade it? Should I, should I uh, get out of it? Whatever. Look, if you really believe that this is going to go crazy, that's fine. But I wouldn't be betting the farm on this thing. And if there's one thing that we've learned from the whole Nikola debacle, and I'm not saying that Henrik Fisker is Trevor Milton because he's not. And actually, I, after saying all that, I actually do like SPAC as one that uh, could be a contender that actually ends up competing with um, with Tesla eventually. But they, they have a long ways to go. I mean, if we've already seen some issues as far as uh, talks with Volkswagen falling through, and then now they're starting back up again. So there's just a lot of risk that's involved with this. And so if you're spending a lot of money piling into SPAC, just make sure you know what the risk is, is involved in getting into something like this. 
Yeah, I think it's okay to have a small position in some in a spec play. Um, I, you know, it's going to move. There's no doubt about that. Yep. And, and I, I wouldn't. I I just wouldn't be in it. But there's nothing wrong with that. I, I feel like there are some people that have that high risk tolerance, want those swings. Um, but for me, I need to see, you know, profitability or or at least a growth strategy. Um, so it's a little too spec for me, but. Um, you know, if you look at the technicals and you see a swing, there's going to be a sell-off at some point. It's going to run up. It's going to be a sell-off. You know, it, it's just going to continue to move up and down. So, um, you know, if you want to ride those waves, go for it. Yeah. And I mean, look, and, and neither one of us are saying not to own it. It's just understand the risk that's involved. There's a lot of hype surrounded around this. People make the arguments about how there was 34,000 registrants. But, you know, again, they could just be solely win window shopping. There's no guarantee that there's going to be 34,000 cars that are sold. There still isn't uh, a Fisker Ocean. So they're promising that that, could, that would go in production and you will see sales in 2022. But again, you know, there's still, that's still, still speculative. So a lot can happen. So just understand that there is risk involved. Um, and I see somebody saying, but you can say the same about workhorse. And I have mentioned that about workhorse. And I've said that adamantly that I liked workhorse, but the only thing that they have resting on them is the USPS deal. And if it doesn't go through, then, you know, expect this to, to get ugly. And I told people that I was begging people to take profit at $30 a share. And I hope some people heeded that warning, but, and then it tanked down to 20 bucks. So um, just understand that that's the risk that you take when, some, when getting into something like this. And I wanted to spend some time on it because I had so many questions about it and I know that I was going to get that, uh, that people inquiring about it. So that's my thoughts. I think that there's a lot of promise here, but there's a long ways to go for this company and um, just understand the volatility that's involved with that. So um, next we have Google and, and bro, I'm going to let you take the lead on, on, uh, Google alphabet. And, uh, because you are really pumped about what's coming up for Google this month, this week. Yeah. Yeah, I am. So, um, early you mentioned October 1st and, uh, Conegra earnings. So that's actually Thursday. So Wednesday, Thursday. which is September 30th is, um, Google has an event called launch night in. Um, we didn't really touch on it. We kind of missed it. Uh, Amazon had an event last week. Tesla had battery day and then Apple had the event before it. So they've all kind of had their events. Um, nobody's been talking about it, but I think you're going to hear about it this week, 2 PM Eastern time on Wednesday. We're actually going live for it. Um, and it's going to be a members only chat, but anybody can watch there. There's been a lot of speculation, no certainty, but they're going to release uh, at least one new phone, if not a couple of new phones. They're talking about um, upgrades to their product lines. So I like kind of the hype they're talking about, um, you know, on Twitter, how you don't want to see a single miss a single moment of it. And they got to bring the heat. We were talking about this offline, you know. Battery day, the presentation was horrible. They dropped the ball on that. Um, <laughs> By the way, thanks for hanging out with If anybody was here, thanks for hanging out with us in that marathon. We were, we were alive for five and a half hours. It was amazing. Yeah. The, I mean, our stream was great. We yeah. had a good time. Yeah, but the, um, but the presentation sucked. But yeah. Yeah, those turd burglars, we were just kind of dogging a little bit. But <laughs> beyond that, you know, Amazon launched good products. I didn't see the presentation. Apple's presentation was pretty good. I thought they could have done the technology better. But if you're at Google, you have to be saying, we need to bring it. And they also got kind of some heat on their earnings call, not being, not like really painting a good vision for the company. They have a lot of exciting things coming, but like they got heat about that. So you got to be prepared this time around. So I'm looking forward to our live stream, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we've been talking about Google below 1500 is a steal. Google has a lot of things going for them. They have a lot, they have um, a great uh, product mix. And I feel like it's, it has, it's kind of lagged behind the other ones and it should be moving more than it actually is. So hopefully this will be the catalyst that gets it going. Yeah. And really all of the FANG stocks have kind of lagged, uh, especially with the upper movement we saw on Thursday, Friday, and not to say that they didn't, they didn't look good. I mean, Google or yeah, Google had a really good move um, on and kind of came down and bounced off of the support at 1400. 
um, and closed the day at 14.44 on Friday, but it didn't quite have as strong of a move as, say, NVIDIA or even Zoom did on fr- Thursday, Friday. And so I'm waiting for the FANG stocks in particular, especially with Goog and the event that they have coming up, to have a really strong um, uh, up, you know, appearance this week. And I think that we could see some pretty good movements if we can get this above 1460s. And then again, re, uh, revisiting a, a resistance here, maybe around 1536. It would be great if we can get this up to over 1500 bucks. Uh, I think that it, it could and should happen this week. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for cheaper shares, then maybe potentially watch for this at a bounce at around 1407. But um, really just kind of wanting to scale yourself in, particularly before Tuesday's event, because you just never know what could happen. They come out with some really good news uh, that gets people excited. and We can start to see this thing move up. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, it's Wednesday's it, the event's Wednesday. Yep. Um, and just so I, I didn't give very specific, but apparently, Chromecast, um, they have a Chromecast announcement. They have a Nest Audio announcement. Pixel Four, Pixel Five is what the speculation is. So we'll see on Wednesday. Definitely tune in. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's we're going to be doing another one of those marathons. We're Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Usually we go <laughs> live Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, but we're. We're doing it again. So um, there you have it with Goog. Moving on to Pepsi. This is the uh, last one for um, the week that we have on watch. And, guys, uh, as I'm going over Pepsi, make sure you're getting your questions in. And real quick, I just wanted to shout out Bratz123 for the donation. Thanks, man. Appreciate the donation um, for for just the thank you sticker. That was awesome. Um, and, but we have Pepsi coming up as well. And Pepsi's... Uh, just lost. There we go. Pepsi's estimated earnings are a dollar forty-eight. They come out with earnings pre-market on the first as well. Um, and this will be interesting to see how this plays out. I think last time they beat earnings, but their outlook wasn't good, and that's why it sold off and it didn't really kind of do much. Um, I think that they come in at so dollar forty-eight. The analyst estimates. I think they come in at a dollar fifty-three, still beating it. But I think the focus isn't really going to be on the drinks so much as the snacks. Um, shoppers really ramped up their snack and prepared food purchases, kind of like what we saw with Conegra. Um, and I think that their overall organic sales were flat um, as far as uh, drinks were concerned. But really, the snack side of things is what kind of held them up. And so I think that we're going to see a little bit more of the same. But uh, I think that we're also going to see this probably finally start to get a move on, especially as we're seeing restaurants and that sort of thing starting to open back up. Yeah, for sure. Um, and anything we say, I think it's safe to say that what we're saying pretty much stands for Coke as well. Yeah. So look at them both and and pick whichever one you like. There's pros and cons for both. I actually believe the last earnings was they didn't give guidance. I think that's what happened where they didn't give guidance, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that might be right. And and that was the issue. Um, But, yeah, they gave – they beat expectations. I expect them to do that again slightly. Um, Would you say 150 what? I said uh, the earnings beat was going to be one – shoot, I just lost – 153. 153 is what I said. The estimated earnings per share is 148. I said 153. I, I need to be writing these down because we do where I was right, where I was wrong. So I, I'm like, <laughs> I had 152. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So I feel the same way. Um, we went through this last time, last earnings. There was a bit of a move by Pepsi, Pepsi, and then it went down. Yeah. Um, and I think people liked Pepsi a little bit more. Pepsi had a little bit of a better move. I tend to like, Coke a little bit more and Coke had, has earnings the 22nd. Um, so a little bit later, but I like them cause they're, they're entering into the alcohol space next year. And I think that's a great opportunity. And I think they're also having an increased focus on the bottom line. Um, not that we're talking about Coke, but <laughs> again, you can't go wrong with either one. Pepsi is a great company. The argument for Pepsi is, um, that they're, they have more diversification in their products And so that's a fair argument. And I think that because of products like Frito-Lay, those do well during the lockdown and that's going to help them in their numbers. So I think it's a fair point. Um, I'm sure that I I, I expect both of them to move. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they will too. Um, And this is another good one where we talk about uh, stocks that, you know, can do well in a pandemic, in a recession, 
as well as, you know, when times are good. And I think Pepsi really does fall into that category. Obviously, with restaurants being shut down and that sort of thing, it definitely affected their bottom line. But um, they're also able to kind of keep things afloat, as we talked about with, with their free to lay line and everything else. So I really like the, the company. Coke, Pepsi, can't go wrong with either one of them. But I think that this makes a strong move going into earnings as well. Yeah.